with Haas Automation. Today, I'm joined by Don Earl. Don heads up the group of engineers that developed a brand new coolant refill option. He's going to tell us all about it. Why did you guys choose to focus on this particular kind of system? That's a good question. We, uh, we went into a lot of our customer shops and we looked at the methods that they were using to uh, maintain their coolant tanks. And what we found was a wide variety of processes that they were using. Uh, most of them were very time wasting. So, what were they doing then? Did well, they, they were, that, they were mixing the coolant uh, sometimes at a station that was away from the machine, carrying buckets back to the machine full of coolant, adding the coolant to the tank, making a mess, that kind of thing, then cleaning the mess up. Right, wasting a lot of time when they wasting should be in front of the machine, probably doing some machining. Exactly, right. exactly. What we decided was that uh, we could come up with a way and a mechanism to mix the coolant for the customer right at the machine. And also automatically. Keep, automatically, that's right. right, right. Uh, and keep the coolant tank filled uh, to the proper concentration level. That's great. Um, can you show us how it works? Yeah, let's, let's take a closer look. Yeah, it couldn't be simpler, Andrew. So here's the system in its entirety right here. It hangs on the back of the coolant tank and it integrates with the existing handle. Hmm. The system is comprised of basically three components. You have your coolant concentrate tank, the mixing valves that are just below, and then on the back there's a port which you connect your water supply to. Now, the water supply can be either city water or it can be your RO water if your plant has RO water facility. You know, the one that you were bucketing the coolant from prior to right. buying this option. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So how does the unit actually mix the water and the concentrate together? The mixing occurs in the mixing valve pack assembly. There's a Venturi valve that we developed especially for this option and it does a really good job of blending the coolant concentrate with the supply water and then dispensing it into the tank. And so it, it's nice and uniform, not going to separate all that kind of thing? Right, that was a major focus of our effort to make sure that we got a very good mix so that doesn't happen. That's great, that's really good to know. So what if I have a particular kind of concentrate that I'm familiar with using? Can I use that same concentrate in this system? You can. You can use any concentrate that's on the market today. There's a calibration process that you do one time on the initial setup of the system that allows you to use different viscosities of concentrate and different line pressures that are coming in from your supply. Is that calibration process pretty easy to do? It's a very simple process and it's a one-time deal that you do initially and then after that it's, it's automatic. That's great. So I can't help but notice that this coolant tank doesn't have any coolant in it. Can we use this system to actually fill the tank? We can. We should do that. Let's, uh, let's go make some coolant. Cool. Well, Andrew, let me show you where the coolant refill option is in the control. It's located in current commands in the maintenance page, okay, the lower half. So probably the first question that anyone's going to ask is, how do I set my concentration? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, here you can see we have it set to 5%, and to change that, it's a simple one button click. You can change that anywhere from 0 to 10%. That's great. That's very helpful because when you have different conditions in the shop, say in the summer where it's very hot, you have a high rate of evaporation, you'll want to lean the, the tank out to compensate for the fact that the evaporation is causing the concentration level to rise. Um, if you're cutting aluminum application and you have a lot of coolant carry out, uh, you may want to raise that back up to your 5 or 6 percent or wherever it is that you're running the coolant normally. So you can just make those adjustments on the fly? Absolutely. You use your refractometer to watch your concentration change and to compensate for that, make changes here at the control. So you show me how the whole front panel works. Can we make some coolant? We can. It's, so how do I do that? Well, it's very simple in this case. Since our tank is, is empty, what we're going to do is we're going to hit F3, and F3 will dispense five gallons of coolant at a time into the tank. That's great. Let's check yep. it out. Here we go. Yeah, we're making coolant. I hear it working. That's right. There it goes, filling the tank automatically. That's awesome. Yep, perfect. So I do have one concern. Is yep. there any way that I can accidentally overfill the tank? Uh, what we did was the control looks at the level float sensor in the coolant tank. And when the level of the coolant in the tank reaches 80% level, we shut that system off. So it prevents an overfill situation. That's great. I'm not going to end up with a big puddle of coolant on my floor. Yeah, exactly. That's fantastic. So really all I need to do is check my concentration periodically with my refractometer, make sure I've got my values fine-tuned at the control, 
and the system automatically does everything else on its own. That's right, Andrew. You know, it's a real productivity enhancement tool for the shop. It keeps the operator at the front of the machine making chips and making money instead of the back of the machine making a mess. That's fantastic. That's real Haas value right there. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, Don. You're welcome.